Australia's largest health company, CSL, is warning this year's flu outbreak could be the worst in a decade. They're accelerating the release of flu vaccines for the current strains of influenza, producing more than 8 million doses. Joining us live is Dr Julianne Bayliss, the Medical Director of Vaccines and Biosecurity at CSL Securus. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. We do seem to hear these warnings around this time every year. We're told, watch out, this flu season's going to be worse than ever before. So what is it about this year's flu that you are particularly worried about? What actually suggests to you that the flu season could be more severe than usual? Thanks for having me. Look, I think that one of the concerns that we're seeing is that flu cases are increasing already. During the pandemic and even early into 2022, we saw that flu cases were really suppressed in Australia because we had travel restrictions, we had restrictions around movement, social distancing and these kinds of things. All of those restrictions are gone now and we have seen that flu circulation is returning to, to patterns like what we saw before the pandemic, which is the highest that we've seen for a number of years now. So do we know when flu season will peak and in that context, when is actually the right time to be vaccinated and, and how long does a vaccination actually protect us for? It's a great question. And the short part of the story is that flu is really unpredictable. Um, we see, we typically see that seasons peak in late winter and early spring, but recently we've seen that that's not the case as well. Um, we try to time our vaccination programs so that there is time for people to be vaccinated before the season would peak. And typically that means that vaccination begins from April, but we are already seeing that flu cases are increasing in our community. Right, so it's something it sounds like we should be getting onto soon rather than later. I see you've done some research into attitudes about the flu. Do you think that we do underestimate the seriousness of the flu and, and do attitudes differ a lot between the different generations? Yeah, they absolutely do. So, well, we know that over, over the whole population, around a third of Australians from the research that we've done really only say that flu is somewhat serious and that there's an additional 14% that say that it's not very serious or that it's not serious at all. Um, and, and we know for the majority of people, they will have fairly mild flu symptoms, but for some, it can be a very serious disease. Um, in modelling has shown that we average around 2,500 to 3,000 deaths each year that are associated with influenza. And in bad seasons, that can increase to, to more than double. Um, and in addition to those severe outcomes, we see hundreds of thousands of people going to their GP every year, um, being kept away from school, from work and attending important events because they have flu. We know that awareness of flu is higher and the seriousness of flu is higher among older um, older individuals and older adults and certainly our younger populations don't necessarily seem to recognise the risk of flu, uh, but there, there is a concern overall, yes. We've seen debate rage over the recent years about whether COVID really is just like the flu. From that research, where have Australians landed on that question as to how the flu compares with COVID? Uh, again, the, the opinions really differ according to age. Older populations certainly do, do seem to recognise the seriousness of both influenza and COVID. Uh, younger populations are, are a little more complacent around that risk. Doctor, do you think we'll be seeing that flu COVID jab coming online soon or are we still a few years off that, do you think? Uh, look, the, the mRNA vaccines have been a really critical component of our response to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, but this technology is really only in the early stages of development for influenza. Uh, it's something that we're exploring uh, along with many other vaccine manufacturers as well. Um, there are clinical trials that are ongoing at the moment, but while these technologies continue to develop, there are flu vaccines that are available right now that are out um, through available through GPs and through pharmacists for people to access um, right now to protect themselves against flu. And what is the latest advice about whether or not you can get a flu vaccine and a COVID vaccine on the same day or in the same week? Is it best to spread them out and, and more broadly on that vaccine fatigue issue? You know, parents can be reluctant to get their children vaccinated. In terms of the side effects we need to be aware of, what should we be on the lookout for? Yeah, so the current guidance from ATAGI that I think most, most people are, are really familiar with now is that you certainly can give a flu vaccine and a COVID vaccine on the same day. The specific recommendations around COVID booster vaccinations do vary slightly according to different age groups. But in the case of influenza, the recommendation is that if you are over six months of age, you should be getting vaccinated for flu every year.
Dr. Julianne Bayless, some good tips in there. Really appreciate you making the time. Thank you. Thank you for having me.